Natasha Martinez, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all of the latest news in the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us today is Christian Harloff. Oh, man, what a day. For obvious reasons, with the trailer we're going to talk about very soon, you know I'm pumped. Man, we got Jedi Council with Freddie Prince Jr. and Sam Witwer later, and what a cast of characters we have today. Yes, from the much-anticipated match for tomorrow's movie tri movie trivia schmodown, actor Sam Levine joins us. Oh, Jesus, I did not expect to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> and his opponent from Screen Junkies, Hal Rudnick. <clears throat> Some people are doubting me tomorrow. I say otherwise. Don't believe me, just watch. All right, oh. what's going on today in the oh, world yeah. of movies? Well, just a little story. Uh, this morning on Good Morning America, Disney and Lucasfilm finally revealed the first trailer for director Gareth Edwards' Star Wars story, Rogue One, giving us our first good look at the movie set in the time period between Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, and Episode 4's A New Hope. We meet Felicity Jones' character of Jin proudly identifying herself as a rebel, followed by a slew of familiar Star Wars images including stormtroopers, imperial walkers, and royal guards. The two-minute trailer stoked the fire in Star Wars fans everywhere, setting up another must-see movie for the fans, with Disney poised to steal more box office records. Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, debuts in theaters this December 17th. Christian, you loved the trailer, didn't you? Damn right I love this trailer. It was everything I wanted it to be, except I couldn't watch it at 6 in the morning like everyone else, because myself, John Campia, and Dennis, we did a trailer reaction slash review that's on this channel right now, if you want to check that out. But look, this was everything that I wanted this movie to be, because I read, like I've been talking about on Jedi Council, the Battlefront novel, which is essentially saving Private Ryan in the Star Wars world. They announced this at Star Wars Celebration, that this is what this was going to be. As Gareth Edwards said, it's called Star Wars. It felt it. It felt gritty. It needed to feel different than the lighter tone of The Force Awakens and, and the other stuff that we had seen, because they want to separate themselves the same way that Marvel does with their genre pieces with... Uh, if you have uh, Captain America Civil War was like a spy film and then Guardians of the Galaxy was the space opera and the heist film that Ant-Man was. This is the war, the pure war film so far. I like what I saw. I like the, I'm like. i curious of whether or not Ben Mendelsohn is going to be playing a version of Admiral Thrawn. Um, there's so much as a Star Wars geek to me that sounds exciting. But Sam, we were talking about it before yeah. uh, when we were watching it. What did you think, first of all, of the trailer and any thoughts and concerns? No, I thought the trailer looked great. Uh, I'm very excited to see the movie. And, uh, you know, the uh, fan that I am of Star Wars, I still asked because I thought I knew the answer, but I wanted to make sure I said, so this is the first of the standalone movies that they said they were going to do. And uh, then you inform me, you know, it takes place sort of right before episode four and it, it is a standalone. But I mean, if this movie is as successful as I expect... Oh, are we going to get Rogue 2? Right, right. That's that's a great question, too, Hal. Uh, Christian, I'm just excited that there's finally a Star <clears throat> Wars movie that deals with destroying a planet-sized weapon. Okay? Oh. I mean, I've been clamoring for that. It hasn't happened it, yet. It hasn't happened yet. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, we're back to that. But actually... Um, that aside, I think but the they're trailer... not going to try to destroy this in this one. They're just getting the plans for it. Yeah, they're just getting the, they're just getting the deets. Yeah, a little recon. Right. Um, uh, Star Wars Rogue One recon. Did you love uh, the trailer? Um, I really like the trailer, okay. and the two things that have me most excited about this film. I mean, the um, I, I love uh, the female protagonist looks fantastic, but Forrest Whitaker and Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah. Um, we we haven't seen actors like that in a Star Wars film and I can't remember. And those guys are fantastic. I uh, can't wait to see them chew scenery and act the hell out of this movie. I think that that's what we should definitely look forward to. But there's other things someone said like, hey, you guaranteed an appearance by Darth Vader. Who's to say you didn't get an appearance by Darth Vader? Who is that person with the two Imperial guards looking at the back of the tank? Who is that? We don't know. It could be Vader, could not. I actually think it was a really smart move even the, a ballsy move that Vader, the rumors are that Vader's going to have a pretty, pretty big presence in this film. Why show him right now? If That's the little tease that we got of him. Great. But the second, that full trailer that I think will probably hit around Comic-Con time, that is or Star Wars Celebration, that's when you show him in all of his glory because then you say, okay, look, follow these characters, what this is about. Start talking about it now because Sam brought yeah. up the point and Mark Riley was talking to too. A lot of these casual fans are saying, is this a continuation like of The Force Awakens? Like, what is this? This is going to start the questions. This is going to, people are going to go, no, 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 actually what this is, is this is a prequel basically to episode four. Then that will be out there. Everyone's talking about this trailer. Then when it's time, 
to show Vader, you show him. I mean, yeah, I totally yeah. agree. You don't need to show Vader yet. It's kind of like uh, for a Civil War, they saved up Spidey um, until the very, uh, like, basically the last trailer. Right. Yeah. What do you think, Sam? I think this is the fear of the walking dead of the Star Wars world. <laughs> <laughs> but, Am I wrong? But teasing it a little bit? Yeah, or? teasing it. It's a different story, right. but it fits in with the main theme. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the fans... Would it be the Joey of the Friends world? It might be. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. Uh, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I'm a for big sh- fan of the universe. For sure. And I 100% agree with you. The gritty tone. Yeah, I want to see this Star Wars war movie. Yeah. Okay. So now you guys are already commenting in the chat room today. What did you think of the trailer? Did you love it? Did it meet expectations? Would you want to see more? Make sure that you comment and let us know as we are talking about other things such as... Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman is in full swing now, with filming continuing to take place in the UK and Italy. Despite everything being said by critics and fans of Batman v Superman, the word on Wonder Woman is that the studio has high hopes for their Amazon Princess Warrior. Now, a number of photos from the set were released via comicbookmovie.com that show exactly what the Amazons of Themyscira will look like in the movie, also revealing just how big an army Princess Diana will travel with. The photos also show a platoon of World War I men that perhaps fight alongside the Amazonian army. Wonder Woman is set to hit theaters June 23rd, 2017. Sam, what do you think of the photos from the set of Wonder Woman? I think that looks like a hell of a production. (laughs) They better have a tremendous amount of insurance because so much could go wrong there. (laughs) I hope they have a good... I hope they have a good uh, a good uh, horse wrangler yeah. on set. I mean, look at all those horses and guns. Oh, that's it. So they better have a, a bond. They better have insurance. Man, oh, that yeah. looks epic. I think that epic is the word that we're looking for here with Wonder Woman. And I think that it's a movie that, I, and regardless of what people are saying about Batman v Superman, whether you love it or whether you hate it, I don't think there are many people that will say that Wonder Woman was a standout point of that film. The interest was high. Not only the interest with her, with Gal Gadot herself, but like the little hints that they had to the history that this character had yeah. throughout the DC Cinematic Universe. I enjoyed Wonder Woman in that film, but she was in one of the worst scenes of that film. Uh, I don't want to give spoilers. Yeah, but let's the, not give a spoiler. Yeah, yeah. but um, just uh, Ari, the reveal of the uh, rest of the Justice League. Um, ugh, poorly done in uh, Batman v Superman. But her stuff, but, though, like the photos. No, but and- her, 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 stuff, her, her stuff is good. And um, again, I'm really excited to have the first female Led superhero film in a long, and I can't remember. It's just one of it, ever. Well, Electra, you had Electra, but yeah. I think, but this movie, I like what we're seeing here. I like the tone of it. I like that when they did that DC special and they show like those teaser trailers, and Wonder Woman was one of those teaser trailers. I like the feel of that back then. Now what I think if, Patty Jenkins is the one that's doing the is directing this movie. Am I can right? Can I pitch Riley? something? Yeah. What if you reboot Electra with Carmen Electra? Hmm. I don't know if we have the DeLorean to Sam? make that. Sam? I, uh, I have terrible news for you. What? I, I already produced that on a shoestring budget. Yeah? <laughs> it was a box office failure. Damn it! Yeah. All right. The people so, did not fall for it. Not at all. Not at all. all you right. know what? F this ass. Do you really? care at all about Wonder Woman, the, the film? Uh, do I care about it in the sense that, uh, like, oh my God, I can't wait, I can't wait. No, but will I see it and get excited if it's really good? Yes. Fair enough. Um, Okay, now it's time for buy or sell. Pretty simple how this works. Natasha's going to read some more happening in the world of movie news. And Sam, myself, and Hal are just going to either buy it or sell it. Natasha, what's up first? According to the rap Norwegian actor Christopher Hivju, who plays Tormund Giants Bane on HBO's Game of Thrones, has joined the cast of Fast 8. The eighth installment of the Fast and Furious franchise will be directed by Straight Outta Compton's F. Gary Gray, and we'll see the return of Vin Diesel, Dwayne Johnson, Tyrese Gibson, Ludacris, Michelle Rodriguez, and Jason Statham. After reports in February about Charlize Theron being linked to the film, it has now been confirmed today that uh, she will be confirmed, and... Oh, sorry. Uh, playing the villain role along with Hibju's character playing one of the villain's main henchmen. Fast 8 will shoot in Cuba with the release date set for April 17th, 2017. How do you buy or sell Christopher from Game of Thrones and Charlize Theron being confirmed for Fast 8? Well, um, I don't care as much about Christopher, but uh, I'm excited to see Charlize uh, Theron in there. And I'm totally buying it because uh, Fast 8, it's good fun. There's no better popcorn franchise out there. I want to go see Fast and Furious movies on a summer day. 
away and then get drunk. That is that is a good time. Or maybe get I, drunk and then yeah, go see the fast. I was going to say your furious. order is you flop yeah. that. You know what? Get drunk beforehand, drink during it, and drink after. So that's, that's fast eight. It's so that's just, buying it. Oh, I'm where? I'll give take my money. Okay. Yeah. Um, I am also buying. Charlie Steron joining this. I am also buying the guy's name that I can't produce from Game of Thrones, uh, pronounce that uh, from Game of Thrones. I think that that dude just looks like an evil henchman that you don't want to mess with yeah. and it would fit well. I want, I'm really very excited about F. Gary Gray doing a version of Fast, of, of the Fast and oh, Furious yeah. for sure. He, he's fantastic. I want to see what he does. I mean, I loved um, Shadow of Compton. I want to see now what he's going to do with this franchise. He and Vin Diesel have a pretty good relationship. Mm -hmm. And to have Charlie Steron as the main villain, I mean, come on, you're adding a lot of talent. And I think that maybe you, we know what the Fast and Furious franchise has lent itself to be. It is, it is a, it's kind of a goofy, fun, over the top action movie. And I think it'll stick to those lines. But now you're adding some really uh, top tier talent. Would yeah. Buy or sell it? I buy it with a couple of caveats. Okay. What do you got? Caveat number one. Uh, Charlize has to uh, recreate her character from the film Monster, Aileen Wuornos, uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and 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 lead as a, a bad guy that way. Okay, you know, whoa, hey, 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 <laughs> hey, take those cars. That'd be great to add a serial killing prostitute to the Fast franchise. I think that's what they've been missing. Yes, yeah. uh, but two, and and this is an actual question: Am I insane, or do I remember reading reports that? Fast Eight was going to be set in New York, and Kurt Russell was going to be one of the. Kurt Russell was in it last year. He was yeah, in the last one. But, but I thought they were like that's why they introduced his character. Oh, to bring him back was in. to bring him back and make the movie. I can't. I feel like I read that somewhere. I heard that in an interview, and it seems like they're going to Cuba. And was that your spec Manhattan. script? You look, it might have been. It was. I bundled it with the Electra movie, but it's not important. Fair enough. All right, Natasha, what's Hollywood's next? Hollywood's giving you a lot of second chances. You know, yeah. this town likes a comeback story. True. <laughs> now that Marvel's Doctor Strange has finished filming and the world readies for the first trailer said to appear on next week's Jimmy Kimmel Live, official photos teasing the Sorcerer Supreme are hitting the web. The latest arrived under the radar, drawing a ton of happy tweets from fans. Aside from the spot-on look with red cloak of levitation on his back and the the eye of Agamotto around his neck. What fans are also noticing are Cumberbatch's hands, with many saying that they are contorted into classic Steve Ditko formations, the artist most recognized for creating his classic look in the comics. Showing Cumberbatch is well aware that of his character's ways in creating magic. Marvel's Doctor Strange will finally be seen in action when the first trailer drops on Jimmy Kimmel Live this Tuesday, April 12th. Christian, buy or sell this official image of Benedict Cumberbatch's <coughs> Doctor Strange? Huge buy. I'm getting more and more excited for this movie the more I see of it, and then you have what people are talking about with with Ditko and I know how you did a, a special on Doctor Strange so I'm looking forward to your thoughts in a second too because we have a mutual friend in, in Matt Key that I wish I was able to pick his brain about this because I am not and I'm not I don't pretend to be um, the expert in Doctor Strange I'm very curious about it I want to see what they do with it and I like the the surreal kind of dimensions of where they're going to explore it with Derrickson but I don't know enough about the mythology and I want to learn about it and Cumberbatch is one of the best out there right now very excited to see the images I think that he looks pretty um, majestic so I love the images Sam buy or sell buy I think it looks fantastic and I've always wondered where Chris Angel got his style tips from and now I think we know <laughs> do you do you know anything about the Doctor nope. Strange? no at all you're are you are you a Marvel guy? Are you a comic book movie fan? Not. I mean, am I a fan of the movies when they come out? Yeah. If they're well-reviewed and well-received, I'll absolutely check okay. them out. But I'm not a comic book guy on my own. Right. So when a new movie like Doctor Strange comes up, I'm aware that it has a rabid existing fan base and people are expecting things. I am not in that camp. So, again, if it's when it comes out, if it's good, I look forward to seeing it. Okay. Uh, Hal, buy or sell? I got to sell because um, in, in the 80s, my mom dated a guy who dressed like that. And <laughs> <laughs> he's a fucking weirdo. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I'm going to buy uh, because that is true to the character. Cumberbatch is great. And the rest of the cast. Uh, Maz Mikkelsen uh, uh, yeah. from yeah. Hannibal. Yep. Also and, in Rogue One. Yeah. Oh, yep. Um, that guy's great. I mean, Hannibal, such an underrated show. And Chiwetel Ejiofor. I love seeing him join uh, the, uh, uh, the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah, I, I think they're making all the right moves. This is a character that opens up a different pathway, the world of magic and mysticism. It's a different thing than like, oh, I'm a mutant, or oh, I um, come from another planet. This uh, opens up a fun zone to play in for Marvel. And right. I think, you know, 
I have no reason to doubt them. They've made all the right moves with Guardians of the Galaxy. And, oh, could a minor character look like Ant-Man have a good movie? That was a solid film, so no reason to doubt it. You've been talking to, like, the hardcore Doctor Strange fans as yes. well, too, on your show. Mm -hmm. What are they thinking about this image? What do they think about Cumberbatch as Strange? <laughs> They're so excited. Yeah. They, they are eating it up with a spoon. Kind of like... It, it, it really reminds me the way Deadpool fans were just getting giddy over Deadpool, uh, over Deadpool, Deadpool. I call them the Dead Fools. <laughs> the Dead Fools love yeah. Deadpool, and uh, I call them the Strange Heads. Are getting really pumped for Strange. I like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's next? Okay, we have our first look at Tom Cruise on the set of the Mummy remake from Universal, the first movie in the shared universe of monster movies from the studio. In the photos, we see Cruise alongside co-star Annabelle Wallace. The film is being directed by Alex Kurtzman, and we'll find Cruise playing a Navy SEAL who gets much more than he bargained for when he goes into the desert looking for a terrorist cell. Sophia Butella will play the title role of The Mummy. The movie will hit theaters on June 9th, 2017. Sam, buy or sell these set photos from The Mummy? Um, I buy because uh and this is going to sound extremely nerdy but the truth of the matter is that tom cruise is still one of the biggest movie stars in every other country in the world uh and that's why movies like oblivion uh where we see them we're like eh, whatever you know i think he's too old for that role he, they do amazing business overseas so i buy tom cruise still uh but i'm confused does this have anything to do with the brendan fraser mummy i think it's like a reboot of, How of about all. that? Because they're doing a they're doing a shared universe now in the world of the monsters through Universal, and they yeah. cast um, him alongside to help further that along because he's pretty good with those franchises. He tends to be. Well, I'm excited. I I liked the the Stephen Summers uh, Mummy films, and uh, and I think uh, this one looks great uh, as well. Yep. Why not? I'm going to sell the photos okay. because there's nothing happening in them. It's just it, This could be from any movie. It could be from uh, another Mission Impossible movie. It could be from Jack Reacher. It, it doesn't show me anything about the movie, but I'm still on board with Tom Cruise in The Mummy. I think it's a great move. I think it's a way because they tried doing that Dracula Untold to start the movie universe. And they go, well, that was a stinker. Let's try something else. And then they bring this dude in there. That's a great move. Really smart. So as far as him being involved in it, that's a buy. But these pictures, I, it's just him standing around. This could be him right after a coffee. I don't know. What, what do you think? I'm 100% sell on this. Uh, yeah. I mean, Dracula Untold, Universal cannot get this monster uh, franchise back up and started. So there's nothing to be excited excited about there. Tom Cruise, I like him. He's a, a watchable, uh, re he's a good movie star. He knows how to handle himself and um, he knows how to run right. and be excited <laughs> and, and hang from things. Yep. He, he knows show me that. someone who's better at hanging from things than Tom Cruise and I'll call you a bold-faced liar. And this picture, um, great. Another uh, guy with a 40-year age difference than his uh, female co-star. Uh, like, I'm selling all the way on this. But I the love movie Tom itself? Cruise. I'm sh yeah, I mean, I I'm sure I'll see it, yeah. but, but I'm not excited about okay. this in the least um, because the missteps uh, with the Universal Monster movies and, um, yeah, just ma make another Mission Impossible. Uh, and they're going to, and they're going to do Jack Reacher, and they're going to do Edge of Tomorrow. And I think that for me, I'm actually really excited the fact that Sophia Botella, who was so great in The Kingsman, is going to be, she's going to be in Star Trek, and she's going to be in now in, in this Oh, she was Razor Legs yeah. in The Kingsman? Yeah. yeah. Okay. A AKA right, Tiffany you, Smith. Okay. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. You just got me a little closer to buying. Okay. A little, a little closer bit, to buying. But not it. Yeah. Did Sam, did you have something? No, I was just, uh, they're making another uh, uh, Edge of Tomorrow? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Hopefully they give it the right name this time. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to. <laughs> All right, what's next? Back in February, The Hollywood Reporter broke the story that star producer Ryan Reynolds made only $2 million up front to play the Merc with the Mouth in Deadpool. Although he was signed on for a sequel, The Hollywood Reporter sources said his WME agents were planning a big renegotiation that would significantly up his compensation for future installments. And based on Deadpool obliterating box office records officially becoming the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time, the studio is paying top dollar to keep Reynolds in the red. According to a report from Heroic Hollywood, those deals are said to now be done, and Reynolds' deal is closed with a considerable pay increase. This readies the sequel for a green light that is set to feature Cable, Deadpool's most famous number two. Deadpool 2 will begin shooting this fall with a rumored release in the first quarter of 2018. How buy or sell Ryan Reynolds' pay increase for Deadpool 2? F yeah, buying. Uh, Deadpool was great. By the way, um, Deadpool's most famous number two sounds like a poo joke from Deadpool. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it uh, because 
it's necessary. You have to give him an increase. Who the hell thought that it would make as much as it did? Jimmy Chongas. He, he certainly thought that it was going to be a movie that delivered, and it did, so he deserves I mean, look, I was talking to Jonathan beforehand, too, and he said, well, he probably had points in the first movie. Sure, absolutely. Uh, you don't sign that deal, I don't think. If you're bringing in and doing the majority of the heavy lifting and you get points on it, you would assume that he, he did, and now he deserves a big raise. The second movie's going to have a bigger budget. It's going to have a bigger audience. So so I think that he deserves this. It's a huge buy. Good for him because he's believed in this character for so long. He promised us the version of Deadpool that we wanted for a very long time. He delivered on that promise, as did Tim Miller. So, yes, it's a huge buy. If anybody is, is deserving of a pay increase, it's Ryan Reynolds. So. Uh, agree. Strong buy. Um, he, uh, I mean, they. it was a tough character sell for people who are unfamiliar with the Deadpool character who don't know that part of the universe and I think Ryan Reynolds was definitely would put a lot of asses in seats on that yeah. and he did deliver and uh, the movie was a, a spectacular success so it's only fair that you make sure that he is equally and fairly compensated for the next one Guys, what do you think? Do you think that Ryan Reynolds deserved it on this one? Do you think that, hey, he's an actor. He makes enough money already to, so he doesn't need another bump, which I don't think you're going to say. But who knows? Go ahead and comment. We're reading the comments. Want to know what you think. But now it is time for opening this week, which is brought to you by our friends over at AMC Theaters. Natasha, what is opening up this week? Hardcore Henry, a man wakes up in Moscow Laboratory to learn that he's been brought back from the dead as a half-human, half-robotic hybrid. With no memory of his former life, a woman who claims to be his wife tells him that his name is Henry. Before she can activate his voice, armed thugs storm in and kidnap her. As Henry starts to understand his new abilities, he embarks on a bloody rampage through the city to save his spouse from a psychopath who plans to destroy the world. Now, they're doing this. This is the first person shooter mo or movies, the first person perspective movies are the new, it's the new found footage. There's, they have this movie, they have Pandemic, there's another one that's coming out. You're going to see more and more and more of these things. And it's for, I think, the young, for younger generations that are used to the, mm -hmm. the video games in the first person shooters. Um, I didn't get a chance to see Hardcore Henry. Mark Ellis did interview the cast, which that interview is actually up, I believe, right now. So you guys can check that out on this channel. He interviewed both Charlotte Copley and the director. Um, and I was here during that interview. It was a great interview, so check that out. But he was raving about the film. And I want to see the film. I'm very curious about it. I didn't love Pandemic. I didn't love mm -hmm. Pandemic because, to me, it wasn't the first-person perspective that got in my way. It was the lack of anything new that I had seen in the zombie genre. So it's, that was that was a different thing altogether, but the first person didn't bother me as much. So that's why I'm encouraged going into Hardcore Henry. I want to see, and I also, the fact that Charlotte Copley is one of my favorites out there right now, I want to see this movie. How, have you seen the trailers for this one? Do you care about this one? I have seen the trailers. I'm really excited to see this. It looks super fun. Um, there, and, and it, it escapes me right now, but there's a music video yeah. um, about this guy, uh, like, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in like reservoir dog type suits, killing all these agents and going on this first person journey. And just that three minute music video um, got me super pumped. So I'm, I will get on board and definitely watch this. It looks really cool and well done. Sam, as an actor, yeah. I'm curious that do you think that first, uh, to take me two perspectives here. First, sure. as a film fan watching a movie like this, can you gonna get motion sickness? Is something that excites you? And then, as an actor, is there something interesting about playing to the camera, even if somebody's out in the background, maybe giving their lines, pretending that it's them yeah. you're serving to? Well, like 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 Hal said, I also saw that music video from yeah. a few years ago. Yeah. I mean, I know it widely circulated the internet, so yep. we all that was at least my first time I saw anything like that and thought, oh, this is very exciting. Um, and, and so I, as an actor, if, I don't know, it's, it's an interesting thing because there are so many, um, big budget, uh, movies with so much CG where you have to emote and act against a green screen right. or, you know, a fake th 3d object that's going to be turned into something later. So I feel like actors are becoming more comfortable with that sort of thing, but, um, uh, I don't know. I mean, as far as seeing something like this as a fan, I watch it and I can never remove myself from this going, 
Oh my God, that camera guy. Right. Huh. Oh my God, <laughs> how did he do that? And he thinks yeah. that, and that's the technical. That's because of your. your yeah, work, I just I can't I right. can't rid that of myself now. The stink is too much on right, me. Right. So I'd be watching this movie and thinking to myself, Oh wow, I hope he didn't break his legs. Right. And well, I mean, I think that, and I, I I do think this is a very generation specific movie. I do because I know people who watch the trailer over. 35, 36 was like, I, I can't even watch the trailer. But then I talked to people, you know, younger than 35. They're just like, you know what? This reminds me of playing a video game. I'm very curious to see how they do that. And the Charlotte Copley aspect really adds to it. I want to know how this movie's going to do in the theater. That, that to me, will see, that's going to prove whether or not we see more and more of these because you know how Hollywood works. This thing does well. It's every other second there's going to be a new version of this movie. But is there a is there a market for? It? Do you guys want to see Hardcore Henry? Are you going to wait for it to come out on Blu-ray? Are you going to see it in the theater? I'm very curious to see what the five thousand of you right now watching live are going to are want to do. And then if you're not watching live and you're watching a replay, get involved in the conversation and let us know. Yeah, but you you hit a good point, Christian. There's such a huge cottage industry of spectator sport video gaming, not just playing a first person shooter, but just watching right, people play right, first right. person shooters. Yeah, shooter. there is there is like conventions they do for that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So there I think there's definitely a market for this. You yeah. know what reminds me of that movie Strange Days. Oh yeah. The man. Ray Fines Catherine yeah. Bigelow movie. Produced yeah. by uh, James Cameron. I That's believe, right. Yeah. yeah. Written by James Cameron. Oh right. Absolutely. Oh, during the height of the Bigelow Cameron uh, love affair. Yeah. Yeah. Um this is oh. uh, okay, so here we have <laughs> we have um <laughs> A lot of no's. A lot of no's. I, oh, wow. A lot of people are saying no. They don't want to see the movie. Not going to see it. Maybe if I hear it's worth a shot. I'm surprised that it's not more split. It seems like you guys don't really care. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know what? I hope it's uh, better than um, a movie from a few years ago. Softcore, Henry. Oh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> all right. Carmen Electra in that one? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Carmen Electra in, in that In your version. <laughs> um, all right. Before we get to Mailbag, we want to let you guys know that we're going to be doing some live tweets, and Natasha will be the gatekeeper. All you have to do is tweet out at Collider Video. You want to ask some behind-the-scenes stuff. You want to ask um, anything in the world of movie news, or you want to ask something about the movie trivia showdown happening tomorrow. Go ahead, tweet in there, and Natasha will pick them out. But we're going to get to mailbag first. You guys have submitted some emails throughout the weeks. We've gone uh, through them. Christian, yeah. yes, I, I was wondering, uh, so th their emails, you're not going to have like a, a, a goofy postman character bringing a bunch of letters. Played by Larry Fishburne? Pl oh, played by Larry Fishburne saying, mailbag! Or yeah. Yeah, just like Pee Wee's. Yeah, where's yeah. Mr. McFeely? <laughs> no, th we, we fired him. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Natasha, what are they saying out there? Najib writes, hello, Collider. My name is Najib. Having recently rewatched Grave of the Fireflies, Spirited Away, and having just seen Zootopia, do you think we will ever see an animated film win Best Picture? Personally, I think Spirited Away should have won. Keep up the good work. Do I think that we should? Yes. Do I think Inside Out maybe should have been in there last year and they should have had 10 pictures and they should just go back to 10 pictures? Yes. Do I think it'll ever happen? No. Because I think that their rationale is, well, we we have the best animated category, so we don't really need to put that in there. Because Beauty and the Beast, I think, was the last one to do it, maybe. Um, and it won't happen again, I think, because they just kind of shoo it off to the side and go, well, that, that's why we have best animated. No matter how good an animated film is, I just don't see it happening. I hope that I'm 100% wrong, but I just don't see the Academy doing that. What do you think? Yeah, I think they're just too stodgy and behind the times and um, set in their ways on so many things when it comes to not just animated films, casting, music. Oh, gosh. Uh, like um, that uh, Wiz Khalifa song from talking about Furious 8 earlier from Fast 7. Uh, my God, it brings me to tears every time I uh, hear that thing. So... Uh, um, yeah, the, the, the Academy, they will continue to get it wrong on animated films. They should at least be nominated, considered. Uh, why couldn't an animated film be the best movie of that year? Yeah. All right, uh, Sam? Uh, I, I concur uh, that it, it should be, but it likely is not going to change anytime soon. I mean, the uh, the Academy, believe it or not, is still a lot of people older than you'd think. Right. who are making the decisions and nominating and voting, and uh, they come from a different era of Hollywood. 
mm-hmm. that uh, that just sees things differently than younger people do now. You know, so maybe someday. You yeah. know what animated movie should have been nominated? What's that? South Park, Bigger, Longer, Uncut. It was nominated for Best uh, Song. I know, uh, but, uh, but, know, but the wrong song. They should have uh, nominated Uncle Effer, but they nominated Blame Canada. Uh, well, you know, um, was the best I was also song. informed oh that Up was actually nominated for Best Picture as well, too. So, gotcha. I mean, maybe, maybe it can happen again. I don't know, but I just, I don't know. I just don't see it happening. Um, what's next? Trevor Thornley writes, Hey guys, I was wondering if you think we will see Luke Skywalker talk in the episode 8 trailers or if they will keep him silent until everyone is in the theater watching the movie. What would you guys prefer? I think that you need to show him talking. I think because he said nothing Mm -hmm. in episode 7. I think that they're going to hopefully mark it on that there's going to be a strong Luke Skywalker presence in it. They don't need to hide him anymore. There's no yeah. mystery on finding him anymore. Let me see. And I think that he's his story is going to be um, a, a focus point of the film. So if you want to have the narrative say this is what the movie's going to be, you have to show him talk. 100%. Oh, I'm sorry. Sam? Yeah. Uh, I think they're actually not going to have him speak at all in the trailer or the movies because they're trying to keep him to a five and under deal. Ha. Yeah. That's a little actor lingo. Bam, nailed it. Five lines and under, they can pay you less. Right. Uh, no, I think uh, they absolutely need to show him talking because at this point, everyone saw uh, Force Awakens and everyone went, oh! oh. Right. So they, they got to give us something. Yeah. How? Yeah, they played that game already. Uh, I, th- I thought they did it well with the lead up to Force Awakens. They they, um, they, they didn't give away too much in the trailers. Um, here, you could still uh, keep you know the the plot points. The you know keep it spoiler free. But yeah, you, you got, give us a little bit of the guy if he's going to be one of the focal points of the film. Yeah. Okay. Now it's time. You guys have been submitting Twitter questions. Natasha has been going through them, and we are going to take some of them. Natasha, what are they saying out there? Christopher Woodburn asks, do you guys think that DC could get Christopher Nolan to direct another comic book film? No. I do not. No. No. I think he's going to do his own passion projects from now till the end of his career. And um, a lot of uh, directors of his stature, when they conquer a world, they tend to not want to go back to it. How? Yeah, I, I I totally agree. Uh, he made definitive superhero films, uh, and he has influenced uh, the tone of the world they're in now. I uh, but I feel there's no reason for him to do that. I agree with Sam. He's he's making these uh, prestige films. He uh, can pick and choose and make these uh, now these dream projects. Yep. Um. I. Also, I just, it's not going to happen. I think that he has done it. He's done it three times, three times with massive success. And I just don't – I agree with Sam. I think he's going to do these original movies that he wants to do. Now, that's not to say he won't take on another type of franchise or genre down the line, or maybe like a fantasy movie or something down the line. He might do that. Um, but he's going. He's doing that World War One, I, I think, the movie, or is World War Two? I forget which – I think it's World War Two. Uh, sure it's World, World War, War Z? World War Z? No, that's not where. Not where was he? He's okay. doing World War II for sure. Um, so, anyway, uh, I just don't see that particular thing happening. Natasha, what's next? Unlimited Power asks: With the improvement in technology, when do you think we'll watch 3D films without 3D glasses? Oh man, uh, that's a great question. I don't know how they're going to do that, um, or when they're going to be able to perfect that. I, I don't have an answer for that question. Within 10 years. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you another technology quest, uh, question, Christian. Yeah. Uh, when, when, do, when do you think we'll be having sex with robots? Um, it depends. <laughs> that, what's the next question? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Okay, Calvin asks, what do you think of Star Wars focusing on more female leads? They are obviously doing it again with Rogue One. Yeah, I think that it's it, Kathleen Kennedy made it very clear that that's what they were going to be doing, um, and it's not just it's not just because like well we need to put more females in there because it's they have a purpose for it they're doing it in the novels they are, it's not it's and it's who that the females are interacting with as well too which we have someone like Daisy Ridley w- with Ray has now b- that the dynamic between her and John Boyega with Finn works well now you look at Felicity Jones going to have uh, back and forth with Diego Luna it's like yes sign me up and then also being mentored by like a Forrest Whitaker it's everyone together with a focus point of a character that's strong whether it's female or male Great, give me a strong lead, and I'm in. Sam? Yeah, I think it's uh, all of the movies are definitely more of ensemble pieces, uh, to be fair, but I I have no problem with it. I think uh, 
it, it's it, the the role was written and it probably could have gone either way it's not a thing that i think anyone's really should be thinking about or worrying about the story is the most important and if you're blinded by the gender of a particular character then you're not watching the story properly how absolutely um i'm all for the I, I love the uh, diversity in the casting of these films and the un, some of the uncommon choices uh, that they're making that might have been different in the past because different people different groups of people women black people want to see themselves represented like as a child watching uh, these wonderful fantasies you want to embody that you want to see yourself or imagine yourself up there and this is this connects with different groups of people I'm such a huge fan of the way they're doing this all right last one Okay, Jonathan Peck asks, after the critical success of The Jungle Book, what is Jon Favreau's next project? Is it The Magic Kingdom or a Star Wars film? I have, I I'm, would not be surprised if he has now announced of doing a Star Wars film. I think that he's been circling a Star Wars film for a while. There's been rumors that he's doing a Star Wars film, whether it's Obi-Wan Kenobi or a Ben Ben, uh, ben Kenobi or a Boba Fett. Um, one of those if not something completely different, but I think that he he's a big Star Wars fan. I would love to see him do a Star Wars movie, and I think that that's next, Hal. Huh? He has earned it. I mean, yeah. uh, just, like, if, if you just, like, without the Jungle Book, if he just did, uh, like, oh, uh, John Favreau wants to take the same kind of mindset he had in Iron Man and apply it to a, a Star Wars character, someone in the Star Wars universe, I'd be like, yeah, uh, I'm all for that. I think he has the right tone, and I think he's got the right respect for the source material. Sam? I say uh, Swingers 2, Swingers, uh, <laughs> which I've been waiting for a long time. But here, let me throw a curveball at you. For real. How about a James Bond movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it would be something to see for sure. But I think he's so he's he's got a pretty good relationship with Disney right now. Oh, I know. Yeah, but but that would be fun. But to that would be it. fun. It would absolutely be it's fun. It's a fun name to, to throw into oh, that mix. But yeah. I, I like Swingers 2 on Tatooine. And we have like, Ooh. you know, and the, like the band and everything. So money, you don't even bar. know it. You yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Um, all right, before we get out of here today, like I said, the movie trivia showdown is happening tomorrow. And these two guys are going to be going at it for sure. Hal Rudnick is the heavy favorite going into this match. He put up a poll and they were saying Hal Rudnick from Screen Junkies, host Screen Junkies, Hal any words about going into your match tomorrow? After seeing so far, you see a Scott Mance and John Roca, what happened there. John Campion, your buddy Dan Merle went out as well, too. You're in this league now. You're tr looking for some redemption after that uh, team match with you and Nick Mundy. What's, uh, what's going down tomorrow against you and Sam? One of us will be the mountain. One of us will be the red viper of Dorne. That's it. That makes sense to me. Uh, Sam, <laughs> <laughs> Sam, anything to say as far as Hal goes? Anything says you are, look, the thing is, I know you're from Schmoes also, and you really good. We play the game where you listen to mm -hmm. movie clips, and you are just like a, an idiot savant when it comes to the, mm -hmm. that stuff. Should people be intimidated by you going into this thing? Are, are, are they sleeping on you as the underdog? No, I, I, I think I've not played the, the Schmo down before. So I don't know really 100% what to expect. You guys throw a lot of curveballs in there. Hal is a tremendous competitor. I think it's anyone's game. All right, and that's going to happen tomorrow. Make sure you check it out. Um, and then we also have the Force Awakens commentary that we put up there between myself and it was David Griffin, John Campia, and John Schnepp. Make sure that you watch that as well as our Rogue One trailer reaction and review that we put up this morning. I'd like to thank the panel today for joining me. First, Sam Levine, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Sam Levine, S-A-M-M-L-E-V-I-N-E. And Hal Rudnick, when he's not delivering mailbags, where can they find you? Oh, you can find me at Hal Rudnick uh, on Twitter and uh, check out the Screen Junkies show on YouTube. Natasha Martinez, where can I find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at NatashaLexis underscore. And for me, at Christian Harloff, both Twitter and Instagram. And like I mentioned before, Jedi Council, we've got Freddie Prince Jr. and Sam Witwer coming in today. We'll be talking about Rogue One. We'll be talking about Rebels. It's going to be a lot of fun. Myself, Tiffany Smith, and John Campia discussing that. A lot of great stuff happening here. And once again, check out the movie Trivia Schmodown tomorrow because one of these guys, I have a feeling, is going to be in title contention sooner than later. Check it out, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Woo! Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.